The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast. Listen to this obituary of a man's life. He brushed his teeth twice a day. The doctors examined him twice a year. He wore his galoshes when it rained. He got eight hours of sleep every night, never smoked, drank, or took illegal drugs. He worked out at the health club. He was all set to live to be 100 years old. The funeral will be next Wednesday. He is survived by 18 doctors, four hospitals, and six gymnasiums. But he forgot. He forgot about God and lived as if this world were all there was to life. The most tragic mistake any human being can make, the most tragic mistake you can make, is to forget about God and God's claims on your life and God's love for your life, God's love for you as a person, as a son or daughter of God. Jesus asked, What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world but lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You need in this moment a deeper relationship with God. There's a great old gospel song that goes, It's me, it's me, it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my father, not my mother, but it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And this is repeated over and over again to include sister, brother, neighbor, but always ending, It's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. The poet Francis Morton wrote, A breath of prayer in the morning means a day of blessing sure. A breath of prayer in the evening means a night of rest secure. A breath of prayer in your weakness means the clasp of a mighty hand. A breath of prayer when you're lonely means someone to understand. A breath of prayer in your sorrows means comfort and peace and rest. A breath of prayer in your doubting assures you that God knows best. There's never a year nor a season that prayer may not bless every hour, and never a soul need be helpless when linked with God's infinite power. Just keep your light burning and let God put it wherever he will. God has a purpose for your life, and it's not just a physical, material purpose. It is written in the Psalms, If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. God is not condemning your wealth. God just tells you not to set your heart upon it. Don't get so wrapped up in the materialistic things of life that you forget about the spiritual, the most important things. Jesus said how hard or how difficult it is for those who trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Those who trust in riches. Remember those words of the scriptures, the love of money is the root of all evil. Don't put your trust in money. Don't focus your love on money and material things and on what money can buy. The best things in life really are free. Money will buy you food but not an appetite. Money will buy you a house, but not a home, a bed, but not sleep, a Bible, but not heaven. Money is a passport to every place except paradise and a provider of everything except happiness. The real joy of living is in finding and knowing and loving and serving God. Hudson Taylor lived a great life of trusting God. Here's what he wrote about it. Let us give up our work, our thoughts, our plans, ourselves, our very lives, our loved ones, all, everything, over into God's hands, because when you have given all to God, there will be nothing left for you to be troubled and worried about. Riches consist not in the extent of your possessions, but in the fewness of your wants. A person is rich according to what he is and not according to what he has. Seek first, said Jesus, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things will be added to you. In finding God, you will find the real meaning and the real joy of life. One stormy winter morning in Kansas, my home state, there was a young cattle rancher who remarked to an old farmer, this is a terrible day, miserable weather. The old farmer said, be careful about criticizing this day because the Bible says, this is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Think about it. God has made this day, wherever on this planet you're hearing this broadcast, God has made this day for you. It must be a good day because everything good comes from, has its origin, its genesis in God. This is the day which the Lord has made. It is written, let us rejoice and be glad in it. The most wonderful day of your life is today. If you will only see it that way. What you did yesterday is forever gone. All that's left is a memory. Tomorrow may never dawn for you. Therefore, make up your mind to enjoy this day today. Don't waste it by worrying about the future or regretting the deeds, the failings, the problems of the past. This is the day. Listen to those four great words which begin that verse. This is the day. 
And this can be the greatest day of your life because you're living it right here and now. You have control. You have choices about this day. Again, it is written, this is the day which the Lord has made. God made this day. It began with the golden streaks of early dawn. It will close with the technicolor glories of sunset. This is not just some ordinary day. This isn't just, as some people say, another day, another dollar. God gave you this day for a great purpose, for high reasons. God didn't just give you this day to make a living. God gave you this day to make a life. You are not on this planet by chance. You're living this day by divine grace of God, by the will, the power, the goodness of God. And somehow you are fitting into God's great plan and God's great purpose of the ages. Seek for God's will with all your heart and soul and purpose and then set about doing God's will. And by so doing, you are investing this day in eternity. Divine dividends will be yours. Live well this day which God has made. Rejoice in this day and be glad in it because it's up to you whether or not this day will be filled with rejoicing or with remorsing, with gladness or grouchiness. The choice is yours. Said Jesus, be of good cheer. Be not anxious. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Have faith in God. And again and again he said, fear not. Fear not and live in faith. As the son or daughter of God, you really are. As you were born to be, God loves you. God has forgiveness, power, purpose, enthusiasm for your life. Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote that nothing great was ever accomplished without enthusiasm. What is enthusiasm? It's from the ancient Greek, en and theos, and means literally God within or filled with God. When your life is filled with God, with the joy, the spirit of God, the love of God, and the love of others, you will live enthusiastically, joyfully, enthusiastic to rise up in the morning to get about your work and your labors because you know you are a citizen of a higher realm of the very kingdom of heaven. Back in the early 1960s, by an act of the United States Congress, a most unusual event took place. For the first time in the history of America, a man became a citizen of the United States without renouncing his original citizenship. As a gift of the U.S., Sir Winston Churchill of England was made an honorary citizen of the United States as well as remaining a loyal British subject. And yet you too can be a citizen of two lands in the spiritual sense, a citizen of this earth and feeling a love far beyond narrow nationalism, but a planetary patriotism, a love for all peoples, black and white, red and brown and yellow, and every hue and shade between members in God's great family of love, far beyond this earthly citizenship. There is the privilege of being a citizen of the kingdom of God. This citizenship brings with it a happiness, a joy, which does not depend upon mere circumstance nor material things. When I became a citizen of the kingdom of God, my mind became at rest about my future. So I could begin to live a relaxed life with peace of mind and enthusiasm for living. And what I've found and millions others have found is available to all. It is a gift of God. It is written, the gift of God is eternal life, life which never ends. Sir Winston Churchill's British and American citizenships ran concurrently, but both ended when his life terminated on this earth for this outstanding man. It is your privilege, however, to have a second citizenship that not only runs concurrently with your life here on this planet, but a citizenship which will last literally forever. It is written, we are citizens of heaven of the kingdom of heaven. Our outlook goes far beyond this world. There's an old poem. Nobody knows who wrote it. But it's called The Blind Weaver. A blind boy stood beside the loom and wove a fabric to and fro beneath his firm and steady touch. He made the busy shuttle go and off the teacher passed that way and gave the colors thread by thread. But to the boy, the patterns fair were all unseen. Their hues were dead. How can you weave, we pitying cried. The blind boy smiled, I do my best. I make the fabric firm and strong. The one who sees does all the rest. What happy thought. Beside life's loom we blindly strive our best to do. But he who marks the pattern out and holds the threads will make it true. Give your life without reservation, without hesitation to the living God. The light of the world shines brighter and brighter as wider and wider God opens my eyes. My trials and burdens seem lighter and lighter and fairer and fairer the heavenly prize. The wealth of this world seems poorer and poorer as further and further it fades from my sight. The prize of my calling seems surer and surer as straighter and straighter I walk in the light. God will lead you in the light, in the ways of truth and love and joy. 
And if in simple faith you will accept this living love and forgiveness of God for you in this moment, all things, all things for eternity will become new for you. And then write to us, will you? We really want to hear from you at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, Life After Death, any and all of this literature, yours free, without cost, charge, or obligation when you write to us. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell out mailing address, Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you. Good day.